We're talking about how we as individuals move into a relationship with God that delivers us from being um, just just half-hearted. And let's be honest, right? In, in, In some of the things that we do in life, we are fully committed. And there are other things in our life that we tend to just kind of lazily move into when it's convenient or, or we find ourselves getting drawn, we, we get tossed, the, the word says it, kind of tossed back and forth by the winds or, or we get drugged by the currents of life instead of making intentional decisions or making the intent of our life show up in the way that we use our time and our talents and our treasures. We just kind of exist. And, and, and in your spiritual walk, I need you to know if you don't know anything else, you need to know today that in your spiritual walk, you cannot live a walk with Christ, a life in Christ, be transformed into His likeness without putting yourself all in. Doesn't happen any other way. There are too many influences in our life. And and I'm more of a visual person, so I want you this morning, we're going to be drawing a little bit on the board. Don't don't look at my artwork, just kind of watch what's happening. But I want you to see how this this move of God in your life wants to, if you will go all in, wants to transform you. And that transformational process starts in that moment that you agree with Him that you need Him. I believe that's what the ambassador is. The ambassador in the political sense is that one that goes out and represents. And we we do the same thing in the process of of transferring into our relationship with Christ. But if you're filling in the notes, that that role that fits us for the kingdom purpose, that move in our life, that that kindles the flame uh, of the ambassador, become a passionate follower of Christ, being an ambassador. 2 Corinthians (coughs) 5.20 says that... When I decide to believe in Christ and to follow Him, I become an ambassador. I don't have a choice in being an ambassador. There's no choice in the matter. The choice is whether I'm all in, whether I'm following Christ, whether I want to be godly. That's the choice. But as I make that choice to to reap the benefits of Christ, then I need to know that I am called at that moment. I I am vocationally challenged to become an ambassador. That one that now represents Christ. That's a tricky one. Because when I decide to represent Christ, I no longer represent me anymore. Uh, I I don't have to tell you the changes that are taking place within our country right now. We've we've followed, if if you're breathing, you can't help but follow the political line. You see all of the, the sides, both sides crashing against the middle as far as who's politically correct and who's not politically correct. And, and both sides stake a claim on it and it's all drawing people. But I'm telling you, in the midst of the debate, it's really easy to hear who is all about me and who is all about him. And, and, and these 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 turmoils and these conflicts they happen in our society but they also happen within the pit of our soul we have this this draw from us and we have to choose now i get this uh, here's kind of how it works we have a call to god he calls us to himself uh, the, the the psalmist writes in, in some very poetic ways from deep to deep. Deep calls out to deep. God in the full expanse of, of His heaven calls out to the depth of our soul for us to be called to Him. And as Paul writes in Corinthians in that, that, same, that same book there that we get, therefore we are now ambassadors. Right beyond that, he says that we are, we are called to be reconciled to God through Christ Jesus. Through Christ Jesus. So the reality is, If I'm going to get to God, if I'm going to get into this place where my spirit is reconciled, where where I'm all in, where where I'm seeing my life transformed, where I really can have, as we talked about last week, a rest in Him, then it happens through Christ Jesus. That's why we say, listen, the worldviews in this world, there are thousands of them. There are thousands of little G gods that you can grab a hold of that'll, that'll tickle your fancy for a moment, but will not reconcile you for eternity. And so we are called. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. 
And he's not joking. It's not political rhetoric. It's actual happening within the spiritual being that God wants to and desires for you. John 3.16 says that He loves you so much, those of us who are caught here, He loves us so much that He sent Jesus just for this purpose. That whoever would believe in Him would have everlasting life. Now that's the gospel in a nutshell. That's, that's what we're longing for, we're desiring for. And that first move of conversion, we call this, this transformation through the person of Christ, conversion. Some people will say, it's when I was saved. Some people will say that, that I was born again. Uh, we, we have all of these sayings, that, that these little statements, these, these phrases that, that mean the same thing. I am all in to be reconciled to God and to become Christ-like. He makes me the best version of me that I could ever be. And for that to happen, that first place of conversion is when I, I decide I'm not going to represent me anymore. I'm going to represent Him. Uh, th there's so many beautiful places in, in Scripture. If you want homework, go, go look in, uh, look up those things that, that talk about us being in Christ or hidden in Christ or, or consumed in Christ or consumed by God. All of those phrases that are in Scripture that talk about us uh, moving into Christ and, and becoming like Him. And this ambassador, uh, it wakes us up when we see this. We, we all of a sudden realize that we know more and we are more comfortable. Listen, if you can't, if you can't accept this, you'll have a hard time moving into becoming a disciple. But we recognize when God calls us to be all in, we recognize that we are more comfortable living in the world of sin than we are living in the holiness of God. Amen. When we begin to be called out of those things that the world readily and easily accepts, and it, it, it's, it's glaring right now, when, when we look at the things that the world readily and easily accepts, and we have decided to be all in, and we recognize that we're on a polar opposite end of that, it is not so very comfortable in this world. That's why several weeks ago we said the one thing that we really need to grab a hold of is we are strangers in this world. We are aliens. When you feel uncomfortable and you say, I just don't feel like I belong in this world, you can say praise God because that is what's happening to you. You're being transformed. And you are no longer comfortable in the world. But, but in order to become comfortable in Christ, we have to become Disciples. Disciples. That, that's, a, that's a different word than ambassador. An ambassador has to. Uh, there's, there's no choice in the matter of having to. Disciples want to. And disciples, in this place of, of learning and growing, they give their all-in life to Jesus. But in that all-in life, they begin to study a bit. The word is not, uh, and, and see, the enemy is so good and crafty in this one because we, we have learned to believe that study and, 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 and work towards something is not a good thing. And you say, well, I don't know. Some people have a great work ethic. Most people don't. Most people don't. Especially when it comes to growing in a relationship with Christ. We, we give a bare minimum. I, I, I don't know how many times I've been questioned in my walk with Christ, and especially since I've been a pastor, um, do I have to do this? If I'm going to be a, if I'm going to be a Christian, what's the what's the least amount I can do and still be good? Well, I've done it. It was a part of my walk for a while. And then there was a maturing process, and, and, and in that place of a disciple, when a disciple says to it, listen, I don't want to do just enough to get by. Discipleship, here, here's one of the major keys of discipleship. Discipleship and the major key is I begin to shift my focus and my time. Two things we don't have a whole lot of extra in our life, right? Extra money, extra time. And God literally calls for both of them from us. It's, it's a place of allegiance. It's a place of silence. He's saying, if you're wanting to be, you, you're going to have to come to this. Now, watch. Now, here, here's where it gets ugly because I'm not an artist. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw these three things out here. Here, here we are before Jesus. And I'm going to do this before we get started. I'm going to move him down a little bit. Here's 
here we are before Jesus. And, and in that place, here's, here's the things that it, it takes. The Bible is clear in the place of creation, and, and, and philosophers and theologians have said that we're created in the image of God, in intellect, in emotion, and in will. I kind of I say it this way. Uh, we, we have those things that are about us that we feel like make us up and, and make us into the people that we want to be. One of those has to do with information. One of those has to do with passion. And the other one of those has to do with the opportunities that we take in life. Information, those things that we learn. Disciples are, are about learning things. Uh, but disciples are also about uh, in, engaging their passions. And they're about taking advantage of opportunities. Now, before Jesus... I don't care where the information comes from. Literally, before, before being a, a, a believer in Christ, wanting to become reconciled with God, wanting to be transformed into His image, wanting my mind, as, as, as Romans 12 says, to be renewed, it really didn't matter where the information was coming from. And our world will tell us that all truth is truth. God help us. I don't know how, I've been preaching it for about 15 years now, that the biggest problem in our world right now is we have relegated truth to feelings. We've relegated the truth to say, however you feel about it, that's truth for you. That is, that is from the pits of hell itself. And if you, want to, if you want to try to blame it on a political party, you can. Uh, people will support you and you'll get a rally going. But it'll be a lie. It is straight from the enemy. The very first thing the enemy does in the Garden of Eden is when he says to, to Eve to eat, to eat the, of the fruit, he says to them, God surely won't let you die. You surely won't die. God had told them in the truth that that sin would bring about death, that disobedience would bring about death. The very first move of the, the enemy in the Garden of Eden was to, to, to put truth into a relative place. See, you didn't die. Church, we've been dying ever since. And sin still kills. And so we need to be careful. We need to, we need to, to figure out what is truth. And as I come to Jesus, then, then I begin to see that, that, that Jesus is the truth. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. And I'm the lie. And, and in this, this move, we, we, we get to where we, we begin to be reconciled. We begin to, to want after Him. We begin to invest in learning from Him. We want to know Him, and then we begin to want to make Him known. And, and we transition in this place of maturity and growth to where we are evangelists. Now, not Billy Graham. We don't get a TV crew following us. We don't have all of that stuff going on. We don't have to have a show, all right? uh, none of that. But we are messengers of the good news of Christ both in our examples and our words. Now this week in the viral video that we put out, we're going we're gonna to break this down a little bit more. I just don't have enough time this morning. I really want to hit you into the Scripture to see how this, how this works. But what happens is when I begin to move through Christ, I'm looking for and longing for a life that I call living in the sweet spot. It's that place of rest. It's that spot where, where God, even in my worst of circumstances, can still use me for the kingdom good, and I have a faith and a trust and a belief that He'll provide that sweet spot. Here's how I believe it happens. Like, right, you, if, if you don't have access to, a, to an internet to, to look at the, the viral video, stop by one day, we'll, we'll, we'll sit down and we'll talk about it with you. But we're going to push it up. You, know, you can get with a friend that can help you see it. Here's what I think happens when we come into Christ. He begins to reconcile these things that the enemy has divided. To where our life begins to look more and more like this. Our information, our opportunities, and our passions begin to long to be reconciled through Christ into becoming like God. Now in heaven, we'll look like this. In heaven, it'll be glorified. In heaven, it'll be complete. And now, the, the things that, that we'll bring out in the city are, are, are the reasons that we won't get totally in because we have, we have two things that, that are drawing on, on us that try to keep us moving in, in directions. We, 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 have, we have things of the flesh. Now, if I listed them all out, we wouldn't have enough air in, in here, but we, 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 have, we have greed.
and then we have hatred. We have greed and we have hatred that's rampant in our world. And even after we find Christ and, and as we're moving toward, they still pull against us. But this, when this starts happening, that's the sweet spot. Where I invest for my information to come from the truth. When I engage my, my, my passions to know Him and to make Him known. In, in this part of my life where, where I'm, I'm knowledgeable about God, where in this part of my life where, where I'm available to God, and in this part of my life where I am just sold out to God, in that part of my life, that's where God is available to work in us and through us. And if we don't offer it to Him, this never happened. The evangelist begins to move out. And, and, and you got to know, this, this new role, this part in us, it, it won't happen in the old me. The, the, the me down here, these things, this peace, this, this satisfaction, this, this fullness, this, this engagement to the truth, it will not happen in the old me because the old me is absorbed in greed and selfishness. He only looks out for number one. She's quick to speak and slow to hear. The old me is unforgiving. The old me, the list just goes on. But the new me, the, the me who has come to Christ and submitted to His will, the new me is different. He is becoming holy. Now, I, 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 again, I wish, I, I wish you guys could just say, man, well, let's call in for lunch and let's just stay here today. Because holy, holy does not mean how many, how many letters you put behind, how many books of the Bible you've memorized. Holy has nothing to do with that. Holy is when you sell out to God and you, you are in Christ. Holiness is the amount of me that disappears into the fullness of Jesus. Holiness is me being uniquely gifted and called and available to God. He calls me to be holy, to be different. And we begin to be absorbed in the forgiveness of God. And, and we regard others more than ourselves. We begin to be hungry for the Word. We, we start longing for others to share His love with. We start longing to offer mercy and forgiveness instead of greed in, in my personal right space. And the flesh and the Spirit battle with that. And those, those, those circles that the enemy is constantly trying to pull us away from being reconciled. So I have to be intentional. I have to place my intent. I have to engage those things in, of my passion and engage those things of information. I need to engage those things of opportunity that move me closer to Him. That transform me into His image. I, I, I need to pray and seek for a godly reset in my life. That can merge and move those parts. That's what reconciliation is. And literally, listen, literally, I become more like Him as I engage Him more. And engage more of Him. John the Baptist said it in, in, in the Gospel of John. He says, I have to become less. I have to decrease. And he has to increase. This morning, as, as we close and we're getting out of here, I've, I've got about five more minutes. Galatians 6, 7 through 10 says this. If you're looking at this and you're saying, I don't know if that's true. I don't know if God really does want me in this place of, of being reconciled. Galatians 6 says this, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, this he will also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Let us not lose heart in doing good. For in due time we will reap if we do not grow weary. So then, verse 10 says, While we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, and especially those who are of the household of faith. Let's pray together. Father, help us today. 
for us. You can do. Shake us up. Stir us. Move our spirit to understand that to you, we find out who we were really meant to be. Ambassadors for you. Disciples of yours. And people who share the good news of Angie's. Apply this word to our heart today. In Jesus' name. Amen. There, there are three directives really quickly in, in, in the closing of it today. Three directives. Number one, the directive is don't lose sight of God and His truth. As you're making this journey, as you're moving into Christ, as these, these continually drawing away from you and pulling you, if, if you want to stay connected, don't lose sight of God and His truth. Do not be deceived, the Word says. There are a lot of forces out there trying to deceive you. God is not mocked. Truth will prevail in, in this world and into eternity. Truth will prevail. And discernment of truth requires a spiritual depth and desire on your part. Discernment of truth requires a spiritual depth and desire on your part, a passionate intent to know truth. You can't just accept everything that runs along. Number two, don't lose heart in doing good. Don't, don't lose heart. Don't, don't lose your passion. Don't, don't, don't let your desire be, be moved around. Don't, don't lose that oomph, that, that, that real after God feeling that you have. It goes like this sometimes for us, doesn't it? Some days we wake up and we're ready to charge hell with a water pistol. Some days we wake up and we're afraid to get out of bed because we feel like the enemy's about to destroy us. Don't lose heart. Engage your passions, right? That's why we put it right here in the middle. Let your passions be engaged in Christ and then, and then He will lead you. Don't lose heart. There's a condition in there. That's kind of your homework. If you look at that condition, it, it, let us not lose heart in doing good, for in due time we will reap if. There, there's, a, there's a condition in here. Do you, do you want to keep your, your passion? Do you, do you not want to, to, to lose that passion? Then, then the if is don't grow weary. Don't give up. Don't, don't cop out quickly. Don't believe the lie that you can't do it. Don't lose heart in doing good. And then the final thing is this. <clears throat> Don't lose the opportunity to reveal Christ to others. There are more of those happenings at, like happened on Wednesday night here at the church. There are more of those that happen all around you every day than, than you have taken the time to recognize. There are more opportunities for you to share your faith and, and to engage people in a place of, of faith and depth, prayer and, and counsel and care and just, just acknowledging and affirmations and loving people. There are more of those available to you than, than you've allowed yourself to engage right now. So, so he's saying to us, listen, let us do good to all people. All people. All, right? all people means if they're Republican, Democrat, or Independent. Let us do good to all people. Let's take the opportunity to share the love of God, the truth of God, the passion of God. Uh, the, the all people means whether they're red, yellow, black, or white. All people. All people. Don't lose the opportunity. All people also runs into that place of whether or not they are third generation Christians that, 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 that have gotten so overwhelmed in what they know. They, they've, they've depended more on what they know than what their heart believes. Or that person who's never known Christ. That, that we sometimes look down on because they don't act and do and believe the same ways we do at, at the point that we are in our faith. Don't lose the opportunity to reveal Christ to all people. I am to do good to them. I'm to do good by them. And in do it, I, doing it, I show them Christ. Don't lose sight of His truth. Don't lose heart in His goodness. And don't lose opportunity to share. And with your head bowed and your eyes closed. That's the greatest good I can do in life. Is allowing myself through Christ Jesus to be reconciled into his likeness. So that that sweet spot grows in me. And grows in me. Until I am like 
Christ. Man, I need help to get there, don't you? I need Him 